Hey guys, I'm Mark McKillier with Live Anabolic. And today, I want to talk to you about pushing yourself and challenging yourself. And there's lots of different ways we can do this, right? So we can challenge ourselves and push ourselves on how fast we can run a mile, how much weight or how much fat we can lose, how much we can bench press, how much we can squat, all kinds of things. Well, today, it's going to be the push-up. I'm gonna challenge myself and all of you guys out there watching on how many push-ups can you do, all right? So before we get to that part of this video, I wanna talk about how to do a push-up, how you can start doing push-ups if you've never done them before, and then how you can improve and get better. And that's one of the things that I don't do a whole lot of. I'm not at home doing tons of push-ups because I spend most of my time working out in the gym. So let's go through several different things here that will affect your ability to do push-ups. All right, the first thing is, you just gotta do them. Now, a lot of guys think that by building up a big, strong chest, doing dumbbell presses and bench presses and flies and resistance training is gonna help with your push-ups, okay? Well, it will to some degree. However, it doesn't transfer over 100%. So you can build a really big, strong, muscular chest at the gym and still not be able to do hundreds of push-ups, okay? Whereas some other guy, some little skinny, wiry guy that can't lift a lot of weight, he doesn't even necessarily have a big, impressive chest, can crank out 70 or 80 push-ups non-stop, okay? So, if you wanna be good at doing push-ups, you literally have to practice doing push-ups. All right, guys, the second thing, pretty straightforward, you need to lose weight, right? So, if you are 50, 60, 100 pounds overweight, guess what? It's gonna be a whole lot harder for you to do a push-up than for some little skinny kid, okay? So you're lifting your own body weight when you're doing push-ups, which means you guys that are overweight are at a huge disadvantage. Remember, abs are made in the kitchen, all right? So the better you can see your abs, the easier it's gonna be to do push-ups. All right, guys, the third thing is you need to pick a push-up style that you can do with really good form. And what I mean is, if you're just beginning at this, okay, and you can't crank out four, five, six good quality standard style push-ups, then I want you to try a couple of these techniques because you need to get good at these first, build up some strength, okay, and then move on to what I'm gonna call a traditional style push-up. So I'm gonna get down on the floor and show you guys a couple of techniques, okay, if you're a beginner and you can't do a standard style push-up. All right, first one is, remember guys, you can't do a regular push-up because you're just not strong enough, you're too heavy, you're out of shape. So, let's take some of that body weight off of your arms and your chest and put it on your knees instead of your toes, okay? So, just start on your knees, okay? We're gonna go forward into what I would call a traditional or standard style push-up, all right? And then now, when you do a push-up, you're only lifting about half of your body weight, okay? Now, if you're doing a traditional or standard push-up, you know, I'm gonna be up on my toes. Now I'm lifting much a much higher percentage of my body weight when I'm doing a push-up. So, you can start on your knees, okay? Boom. That's one way, and the other way is doing an elevated push-up. Now, an elevated push-up is actually harder than the knee push-up, but still easier than doing the traditional flat or horizontal push-up. So, I'm talking about getting your head higher than your feet. You can put your hands on a coffee table, on a chair, on a couch, it doesn't matter, okay? But the, but the more elevated you are with your head, the easier the push-up's gonna be. So, I'm gonna put my hands kind of at the standard shoulder width, okay, position on the coffee table. Then I'm gonna get out into a plank position here, straight back, and then I can do push-ups this way. Now guys, this is harder than doing it on your knees, but still, it's much easier than doing a completely flat push-up. And that's because, from a physics standpoint, when you move your head up this way, more of your body weight is transferred down here to your feet, and less of it is up here on your arms and chest, okay? So when we go horizontal, you can see that the center of gravity moves back towards the middle, back towards your arms and your chest. So guys, if you can't do the standard traditional push-ups at first, I'm fine with that. Do one of these other easier techniques. Once you get good at those, then transfer over to 
the correct form push-up. The fourth thing you guys need to think about is the proper hand and elbow placement. A lot of people don't really get this correct, so let me show you the best way to do this. And when I say best way, it means the way that's easiest on your body, which means you can do more push-ups, okay? That's what we're trying to do right now, get the proper form that allows us to impart as much force as possible in the most efficient way possible to do as many push-ups as possible. So guys, that means finding a comfortable hand placement here. We don't want to be too wide, okay? And we don't want to be too narrow. If we're too narrow, we put too much of your weight on your triceps and we take some of it off your chest. And then again, if we make our hands too wide, we put our triceps and our chest and our shoulders in a really kind of awkward position. So it's, you lose a lot of the leverage, okay? So you wanna get your hands pretty much shoulder width, okay? And then the other thing I want you guys to think about is whether your hands are pointed too far in or too far out, okay? So I like to have my fingers pointed pretty much straight ahead, slightly, just slightly inward. And the reason being is when I go down, look at my elbows. They're not way out here and they're not too close to my side. So you want your elbows to be at about a 45 degree angle to your body, okay? So the wrong way would be having your hands too far in. So my hands are the correct width here, but my fingers are pointed so far inward that it causes my elbows to flare out, okay? I lose a lot of mechanical advantage when I do that, okay? Then if my hands are pointed slightly outwards, okay, then when I go down, my elbows come in tucked too close to my side, and once again, I lose some of that mechanical advantage. So, another way of thinking about this is dumbbells. If you're gonna do dumbbell presses, okay, your elbows will naturally find the more the most efficient way to push those dumbbells up and down. And if somebody was was uh, filming you, you would notice that your elbows are not out here when you're pushing those dumbbells and you're flat on a bench, and they're not in here when you're pushing the dumbbells. Your elbows would just naturally kind of come to this position, which is about 45 degrees, okay? So proper form, is gonna allow you to do far more push-ups than if you're doing it the incorrect way. All right, number five is warm-up, guys. And so you might wanna do this first, obviously. You got to warm up, okay? And I'm talking about warming up your muscles, your chest muscles, your shoulder joints. Now, we also need to warm up the other muscle groups that are involved in a push-up. Most of you guys don't realize that push-ups get almost every muscle in your upper body, okay? It engages your core. It obviously works your chest. It also works the front part of your shoulder muscle. Now remember your shoulders, your delts are made up of three different muscle groups, the fronts, the sides, and the rear. So when we're doing push-ups, we're engaging the front part of our shoulders. Of course, we're getting tons of tricep exercise. Anytime you straighten your arm against the resistance, you're engaging the triceps. And the other thing people never think about when they're doing push-ups is you're using your lats you're actually engaging your lats when you're pushing forward like that. So you'll be able to feel this muscle. So let's warm up those muscles, okay? And use them before we get out and do our max effort push-up challenge. So let me show you how I like to warm up. Got a little dumbbell here. This is just a real easy way to warm up your back and your shoulder joint. And I'm just doing kind of bent over rows here. I'm not doing a real heavy weight. I'm just trying to Get the blood flowing. So I'm not doing this to failure, okay? I'm just getting just a slight pump going, okay? I want those muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, everything to warm up and be prepared for a max effort push-up challenge here in just a minute. All right, so shoulders, you guys, they have tendonitis in your shoulders. Man, real easy. I just like swinging my arms, okay? I've got some shoulder issues that kind of flare up from time to time, especially if I don't warm up right. And then, guys, 
The other type of warm up is the warm up that I do extensively at the gym when I'm lifting weights. And that is, I get on the machine that I'm about to do, and I actually do several baby sets, okay? Meaning I use a really light weight, and I do eight to 10 reps, don't come anywhere close to failure, and that flushes a bunch of blood to those muscle fibers. So, if you're about to start doing some push-ups, let's do some baby sets of push-ups. So, when I say baby set is, let's say your max amount of push-ups is say 15 reps. Can't do any more than 15. A baby set for you would be five push-ups, okay? So, I'm just gonna knock out a couple baby sets. I'm just gonna do about five or six push-ups. You don't have to kill it, okay? All right, so I'm feeling, you know, some stiffness in this right elbow, okay? So I stopped, I could have done a whole lot more, obviously. I'm stop, catching my breath, okay? This is exactly how I do it at the gym when I'm, say, doing a bench press, okay? Or squats, or any kind of an exercise. I will literally do that exercise with minimal effort for two, three sets. Matter of fact, my legs warm up so slowly, okay, that it takes me five or six warm-up sets doing leg weights before I put the real weight on there that I'm gonna be pushing hard. So, give yourself 30 seconds or so, let's knock out another baby set. All right, the blood's flowing plus, Kind of get the heart rate up a little bit, okay? You're preparing your body for a really difficult workout or challenge that we're about to do. And that is, how many push-ups can I do? And guys, I don't do a lot of push-ups. Remember I said, if you want to be good at push-ups, you need to do them. Well, guess what? I, I focus a lot of my time lifting weights, dumbbells, barbells at the gym, and I'm beat. You know, my chest is beat up at the end of a chest workout. So, I typically don't do push-ups, which means I'm not gonna be very good at them. The other thing is, guys, everybody's built differently. I'm gonna stand up real quick so you can see this. And when you're pushing, okay, you got all these levers here, okay, and rotation points. And I happen to have really long arms. I have a long wingspan. My arm, or my wingspan is actually longer than I am tall, which is kind of unusual. So guys, when I have long arms, that means I have a disadvantage, okay? With the weights out here going through my hands, elbow and shoulder, and it's, it makes it really hard to do a lot of movements at the gym. And when I say hard, it means I just can't do as much weight, okay? You, you'll see these guys with these little short stumpy arms or short little legs, and they're just cranking out a ton of weight. I mean, they only have to move their the weight or their body weight, you know, a very short distance. So guys that are tall and have long arms, you guys are gonna see that it's much more difficult for you to do a lot of reps on certain exercises like this. All right, so let me do one more baby set. All right, so I'm gonna catch my breath. You guys do the same thing and then get down Crank out as many push-ups as you can do, okay, without failure, and then keep that in the back of your head. I want you to write that down, and then you can practice, okay, over the next few weeks and months, and I want you to post below in this video how many you did and how many you want to do a month from now, and I'm going to tell you how to reach that goal. All right, guys, let's figure out how many push-ups I can do. Actually, I have no real good idea. I'm guessing somewhere in the 20s. But screw it, you're gonna find out at the same time that I find out. Follow along. Woo! All right, guys, here we go.
I didn't miscount that was 35 sort of getting really sore up here a lot of lactic acid building up Whew, not to mention you just get out of breath because remember how many muscles were engaging I mean you actually get some of your legs involved too because to keep your back straight you have to you have to engage your core which means your glutes, your hamstrings get involved also. So, whoo, I'm out of breath. 35, that's probably <laughs> seven, eight, maybe 10 more than I thought I could do. So now, before we finish up here, I wanna to talk to you guys about what is a good routine to actually increase your maximum push-up effort. So, I want you guys to do this. First of all, you have to figure out what a set is for you. Because for some guys, it might be 15 or 20 reps, right? That is about as many as they can do, or close to as many. And remember, a set is not 35 for me. That was max effort to failure. So a set for me would be more like, I would say about 20, okay, push-ups. So you get really fatigued, you can still go on, but you got a good pump going. So figure out what your maximum number is, and then back, back off of that okay a good 20 30 percent so if your max effort is 10 push-ups i would say a set for you would be kind of about six or seven reps okay so by six or seventh rep you're really tired you could do three more you could get to 10 but i want you to stop call that a set for you then i want you to do four sets twice a week okay so don't do them every day that's for those young guys we're older, it takes our bodies much longer to recover, okay, for those muscles to rebuild. So twice a week, four sets. Now for you guys that are in better shape, you can do more push-ups, all right, your sets might be 10 or 12 or even 15 push-ups for one set. So I want you guys to do six sets twice a week. Now, after a few weeks, you guys are gonna find out that obviously you're getting stronger you're getting more efficient, the mind muscle connection is getting better, okay? Then I want you to bump it up and do it three times a week. So beginners, four sets, three times a week. Guys that are a little bit more advanced, feel more comfortable, do six sets three times a week. Then after a month of that, I want you guys to report back how many is your maximum number of push-ups you can do in a single setting. Guys, I hope you got something out of this video. I know I got really out of breath and I figured out how many push-ups I can do. And please be sure to subscribe to this channel. We're gonna have some more fun contests coming your way. Give us a little thumbs up, like, share it with some of your buddies, and then remember guys, this isn't gonna happen overnight. You have to stick with it and never give up on yourself.